but I really believe that the, the, that the military industrial complex appeals to a side of humanity that definitely exists. You have that orange, I want that orange, I'm hungry. It definitely exists, but we can coexist without the threat of total annihilation of 90% of the population of the entire planet. I don't believe that the war is over till the body count is finally filed. I hope that the men discover what's driving the people wild. Nuclear madness is killing my country. Solitude sadness is over me. I think that that they have kept the American people and the people of the planet in the dark. They're not about to tell you that a thousand people may die over the next 20 years from the accident of Three Mile Island. They're not going to tell you that. They're going to say, hey, prove it. We didn't do it. The atomic veterans, 400,000 GIs forced to witness nuclear blasts, a lot of who have died and want compensation for their widows and their children, and the government say, ha, prove it. The people in the Marshall Islands, that when they wake up in the morning, they have to put on their glasses and attach to their glasses and their nose and their lips and their teeth. They're trying to get money out of the government and the government say, prove it. And you can, and they know you can't prove it. You cannot prove a direct link between something that happens 20 years after the event, you know? And it's all tied together. Aloha. out of the environment and then his technology maybe he can do that but then he, what the, they don't know what to do with it you know they want to bring it dump it over here in the Pacific with us and we don't want it <laughs> people come to hear the music but for something like this they come and they hear the music and they go away thinking about what they've heard and the issues involved and the more that happens the more people get educated the more maybe we can turn the government around to do what we want them to do rather than just being little that they can move around whenever they feel like it. Uh, it's very important because a lot of people out there, they know it's there, but they don't want to do a damn thing about it. Because they don't know what the, the, we know now what's going on, but the future, the future is what's happening. Our children's, our children's children will, will, are, are the ones that are going to feel it. <laughs> We really don't just want the Pacific, uh, even up to the northern or western part of the United States and around to Japan and down all the way down to Australia, free of nuclear um, substances. We want the world, but we, we have to be realistic with what we have right now and work within our own backyards first. One of the problems uh, in the Pacific area is that uh, most people in the United States don't know where places like Palau are and don't particularly care. They think of the Pacific as some kind of South Seas paradise and they don't know the incredible nature of nuclear imperialism and exploitation that's gone on. I can say that somewhere in Guam they have a storage for this nuclear uh, bomb and also the um, Polaris submarine that they have in Guam. I mean, you know, they always say for uh, national defense. Well, the bombing started in about 
1963, I think, and we've had 41 atmospheric tests and this 1975 where the pressure of the other government in the Pacific and yeah, in the Pacific were so strong that France stopped. And uh, then she's now she's into underground testing. We've had 25 of them until today. We believe that um, the people of Palau and the people of Perth will be are being drawn into the front line of a nuclear war. And the uh, Japanese government beginning to get in a plan of uh, nuclear waste, waste disposal about 600 miles south of Japan. So that 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 is very close to, that's within the Marianas uh, boundary. And uh, I don't know, <laughs> it's really amazing. One of our policies on, uh, is on nuclear-free Pacific Zone. And uh, we just declared that we, you know, we would like to, uh, we would like uh, uh, Pacific to be a nuclear-free Pacific uh, zone, and we will do everything we can to, um, to have it that way. Uh, now the question that uh, we raise at the moment is, uh, you know, what are the other countries going to do about it? Well, you see, during the war, uh, islands in Palau were destroyed, homes were burned. Uh, Taro patch were destroyed. Place where we can get our food, people were evicted uh, from their home to live in the caves. There were some 48 atomic bombs uh, uh, being exploded uh, or tested in the Marshall Islands, including one hydrogen bomb. Uh, as a result of that, people of the Marshall are dying of cancers. They got no place to go. And we were aware of that, and we didn't want that to be happening to us. It's a small place, and it's, it's our only home. And we don't want to, to be a target place uh, like uh, Pearl Harbor uh, in, the, in the Second World War. We don't want to be a target area like that. The Palauans are explaining why they drafted and ratified a nuclear-free constitution for their islands. They will soon become independent from the United States, but will remain linked through the Free Association Compact, now being negotiated, which would give economic aid to Palau in exchange for U.S. control of Palau's defense and security. U.S. defense plans could directly conflict with the no-nukes constitution. Or under the term of these agreements, uh, uh, such acres, uh, 32,000 uh, acres of lands, uh, shall be used by the United States at free of charge. It keeps authority to the United States, or United States is asking authority to bring in a foreign uh, armed forces for the purpose of conducting training in Palau. N now that to us would be another war while the rest of the brothers and sisters in, in the Pacific will be, will be in peace. The United States will bring another word to us. And the U.S. objection to the nuclear-free constitution? We pointed out that if the United States is to be responsible for conducting the defense of Palau and to have uh, the defense rights and obligations which are included in the, in the whole concept of free association, we must have the right to turn to the government of Palau and say, now, we need such and such land rights. We haven't been able to negotiate them with the private landowners that own the land. We need you to exercise the right of eminent domain to acquire the land for us. A nuclear provision in the compact, which would prevent not only the importation of nuclear weapons into Palau, but even the transit through Palauan waters of nuclear-powered uh, naval vessels. We cannot be precluded uh, by an agreement from the use of weapons which are standard, or not the use of weapons, but the, the possession of weapons which are standard in our uh, uh, equipment in the armed forces. Because the end result of that is that 
we provide the world with a clear roadmap of where we can and cannot have nuclear weapons. The Constitution is an independent constitution. And uh, people always say, especially Rosenblatt who came to Palau, you cannot be independent. And nobody is independent, and that's true. But independent to us, independence to us means for us to control our land, for us to decide for ourselves whether we want a Trident submarine base or not, for us to decide what to do with our waters. And I think that's, that's what we mean by independence. And if you want to sell our land for military use, then at least it's up to us. The struggle of the Palauan people is also the struggle of a lot of, a, a lot of Australians. We in, um, in Perth, in Australia, face the prospect of having um, a US military base um, about 12 miles from the centre of our city, which will have an estimated 10,000 military personnel based there. The Australian government has actually requested the United States to increase its military presence, its naval presence in the Indian Ocean. Um, I think this is against the wishes of the people in, in the inhabitants of the Indian Ocean side of Australia. In fact, we have the situation now where um, local governments are passing resolutions declaring their areas nuclear-free zones in order to keep out the presence of, of uh, nuclear waste and nuclear weaponed and nuclear um, powered warships. Well, the United States needs to have a presence in the Pacific because, first of all, it's an area of great interest to us. It has been for hundreds of years. Right now, the Pacific, countries in the Pacific region have exceeded, the, in a trade sense, the amount of trade that we do with Europe. It's important from a strategic sense because your, your military strategy is designed to support your vital interests, and your vital interests are determined by your uh, commercial relationships, your alliances. You know, we have alliances in the Pacific, and where the threat seems to be developing. What we're concerned about is this with this foreign base policy of the United States is that it's taking the heat away from the um, American mainland. The people of Palau and the people of Perth are, are the pawns in the nuclear game and we are the ones who it's conceivable could be the ones to be taken out in any nuclear exchange between the superpowers. It's possible to understand their reasoning but uh, they're not being exploited. Uh, actually all of this effort from a military point of view is to maintain the peace and to prevent or inhibit the outbreak of nuclear war. As I say, if a nuclear war starts, everybody's in the trouble. So it boils down to the greatest good for the greatest number. Uh, you have to think about the world. You have to think about the people of the United States, the people that are our allies. And if the problems that are involved can be solved by only uh, inconveniencing a very small number, not hurting them, not depriving them of anything except perhaps their traditional home, but give them an alternate, uh, I can't think of a better way to solve a very difficult problem. Stop that bomb! Stop that bomb!
In the United Press article in yesterday's Honolulu Star Bulletin, we learn that France has indeed tested recently two neutron bombs at Moruro. We, the delegates to the Nuclear Free Pacific Conference 1980, wish to make this statement in protest. People of the world, we have to know that this enhanced radiation bomb is the most deadly of all nuclear weapons. We do not want this form of so-called progress which is imposed on us and endangers our children's future and the survival of the world. Our traditional Polynesian values and our respect for nature must be recognized. But France has never, never respect us. In 1945, the whole world was horrified by Hiroshima and Nagasaki explosions. In 1954, it was Bikini. Today, it is Moruro. Where will it be tomorrow? Because of the testing, it has developed the, the island of Tahiti especially in a very uh, destructive manner because you, with, you know, we had, I think, about 20,000 people at one time, so suddenly you had to build houses, and, uh, make the roads bigger, and all this was done without any control and just cut the mountain up and extract the sand from the, from the sea, extract the, the rocks from the river. We have lots of rivers now that are dead, that there's no water anymore. We have beautiful valleys that are completely uh, destroyed by big uh, b smokes and big uh, factories and things like that. Stop the bomb! No more Hiroshima! Mankind must live! Mankind must survive! Japan is the second uh, the largest uh, country in terms of uh, nuclear power following the United States. And there are just too many nuclear power plants in a small uh, country of Japan. The bomb uh, dropped on Hiroshima was a uranium type bomb and the bomb uh, dropped on Nagasaki was a plutonium bomb. And when you operate uh, nuclear power plants, uh, you have to have a fuel which uh, consists of uh, uranium. And uh, when you, after you operate nuclear power plants, you get uh, plutonium. So the operation of nuclear power plants is directly related to the production of uh, plutonium, which could uh, be used uh, for producing uh, Nagasaki-type uh, atomic weapons. And for us, uh, nuclear power plants are the same as the nuclear weapons. If you operate uh, 1,000 megawatt nuclear power plants, and if it causes a meltdown, there will be a radiation fallout uh, being spread into the atmosphere with the amount uh, 1,000 times bigger than the uh, amount uh, caused by the bomb dropped on Hiroshima. We Pacific Islanders people do not want to be used has Guinea peaks. First, the nuclear problem is only a symptom of a bigger problem. What do we want? We want our political independence. Our problems, we of the indigenous people, are many. We are strangers, all of us, native indigenous people, in our own lands. We are landless, while those who have come as immigrants to our shores 
have everything. They have all of our land. They have the money. They hold the power over our daily existence. We have to dance to the tune of the government that keeps us oppressed. What they are doing is grounding the aloha, the love, out of us. Aloha is synonymous with love and peace. Yet we, the people of Aloha, have given plenty. But in our own land, there is no aloha for us. We feel we have a responsibility to our brothers and sisters in the Polynesian nations to try to make sure that they don't make the same kinds of mistakes that we have made and that have been made here on our lands. Um, I am uh, stateless in my own country. So the reason why uh, we, want, we want independence is uh, because we want to gain our, our status, uh, which we believe was God's uh, given status to every indigenous people wherever they are. Uh, and um, we also wanted to uh, get back our land because land to us uh, is our security. On Aboriginal land in Australia, uranium is being mined for nuclear power plants and nuclear weapons. The payment of royalties from the mining that was going ahead there. In fact, the people have always stated that they don't want money, they want their land. The money is no... Pr any amount of royalties is too little a price for their land. There is absolutely no price on that land as far as they are concerned and they don't want it. In fact, I went to the ranger um, in uh, inquiry and it was just absolutely intimidating to to sit into that in that situation and try and express your concern you don't know anything about it you feel concerned uh, people are saying that we want land our land back we don't want mining a lot of aboriginal people however they express it all the love for the land was there we all share this thing that the earth is our mother that um, you know we belong to to uh, to the earth it's not the other way around uh, and we all have this in common we're just caretakers you know and we just look after our mother and, uh, to, to hand on to to our, our descendants <laughs> any human being, I wish that we were in a situation where we didn't have nuclear weapons because you know, I'm, I'm as worried about, you know, I have a wife and family, I'm worried about uh, being, you know, being dis being, have, seeing the world destroyed as anybody. Uh, unfortunately, you know, you know, the Russians have nuclear weapons and nuclear weapons right now is, is, a, is a deterrent. We have to have them as our only ace in the hole, particularly since the U.S. military forces are, are degrading rapidly. It's lack of funds and budgets and stuff. You know, the, the U.S. military forces are getting considerably weaker and Russians are getting considerably stronger. The only thing is keeping this country, and it's my belief, a free country, is the fact that we, we have an ace in the hole. That's nuclear weapons. Not to use them. And I hope, you know, hope we never, ever use them. But if Russia has the same ace in the hole, doesn't that cancel ours out? Well, see, we have no control whatsoever over, over the Soviet Union. Uh, you know, if we just suddenly up on our own and gave and got rid of them, you know, they could, they could, walk, they could walk in the next day and there's not, not a damn thing we could do about it. I mean, you know, the fact that the country's free and, you know, we have, you know, groups can protest and everything is, is because, you know, our country can, uh, can maintain its integrity and maintain its freedom. And nuclear weapons are kind of a necessary evil. The whole purpose of defense is to defend your way of life. In the Soviet system, the individual is not important. It's the state that's important. 
in the dem democratic system, it's the individual that's important and not the state. We live in a time when there are two different systems of power, one more aggressive than the other, one rearming, growing stronger every day, and the other sitting on their duffs and watching the world go by and dreaming of non-nuclear worlds, which is a really a ridiculous lack of reality. Whenever the military, the, the U.S., you know, wherever they go and they establish their base, that's a good sign right there that it's changing the whole social structure of that uh, society right there, you know? culture has been ripped apart by the U.S. system. We have TVs, movies, we have uh, super, uh, markets, and which in our culture we used to, we, we rely on uh, the ocean and the land, farming and fishing for our food. Right now, it's that that uh, is being forgotten. There are parts, uh, it's aspects of the passing of their own traditional way of doing things, which they regret. But much of much greater interest to them is the acquisition of sufficient um, wherewithal to sustain a modern economy in their own islands and in their own way. That's what they want. They don't want to go back to the previous subsistence patterns. Do you think the Pacific has been made safer by the fact that there are so many weapons and uh, submarines there, or, or has it been made more dangerous? You know, if I take a match and I put it all around me, you know, and not strike it on that thing, and I tie that all over my body, and I go like this, isn't there a chance that that thing would blow up? Hmm? Or just drop it here? It's the same thing. The more you put all these things out here, you're building up the chances for that thing to go off. You know, the, uh, our islands, uh, uh, everything is contaminated. We just know these years. But 20 some years ago, the uh, AEC doctor told us that everything is all right, except uh, coconut crab. But that's not true. We just find out uh, these years that it's not true. Many people, I know the uh, stomach cancer, thyroid, and leukemia as one. And uh, also the, uh, when we walk around the island, like my feet is burned all, all over here. <laughs> I, I she had a, after the uh, test, she had four children that were not able to leave after the uh, testing. have independence say this year all the pacific countries who are fighting for their rights or next year how many years to come if we all get our independence we we, we declare our 200 mile zone no other countries allowed to come into our zone maybe that's one way we can win nuclear free pacific zone with the failure of the non-proliferation treaty it seems like unilateral regional efforts make more sense. That is to say, 
uh, nations and geographical regions coming together to decide to declare their region unilaterally nuclear free. This is not going to necessarily stop the whole arms race, but it is a unilateral initiative that can be taken by people who are trying to determine their own destiny. And the way we've got to look at it, I think, is to break this block down into the small block to see what's going on in our own backyard in the nuclear arms race. And then we've got to stop what's going on in our backyard and have a bit of faith in other parts, that the people in other parts of the world will also stop what's going on in their backyard. Change before our chances are gone.